In this video, I want to talk about the bound states for the finite square row. First, recall that when we have energies for this type of square row here that are less than zero, these will be bound states because the energy is less than the potential at infinity. And then energies which are greater than zero are going to be scattering states. And we're going to be focusing in this video on the bound states. We'll talk about scattering states elsewhere. So let's first begin by guessing what this is going to look like, what a bound state might look like. So the wave function psi might look something like this. Oops, let's draw that again. So the wave function looks like this. So the wave function will be matched at the boundary of the finite square wall. It'll be continuous and its derivatives will be continuous. Let's label the regions 1, 2, and 3 as such and then solve the Schrodinger's equation in each. So for region 1, Schrodinger's equation, writing that down, let's label psi 1 in that region. And that's equal to E psi. Recall that E is less than 0. So when I move the constants over, I get the double derivative of psi is equal to plus k squared psi 1, where k now is the square root of this positive number. So k is a real number here, even though there's a minus sign in there. Solutions look like exponentials. And I know that b must be equal to 0 because this term blows up as x goes to minus infinity and I want a wave function that's normalizable. In region 3, the process is essentially the same. Um, and so, just recalling this is going to be similar to second region 1, we're going to get a differential equation from Schrodinger's equation that looks essentially the same with e psi 3. Uh, and so let's just jump down to writing it as the solution, where I have f e to the kx plus g e to the minus kx. The k is the same. But in this case, f must be equal to 0, because that term otherwise would blow up as x goes to positive infinity. And I don't want that. I want a normalizable wave function. So that's regions two, 1 and 3. Let's look at region 2. Inside region 2, I have minus h bar squared over 2m the second derivative of psi 2 with respect to x squared, as usual. Then I also have a potential term, minus v naught psi. Remember, this v naught coming through here is our potential, and it's negative, is equal to e psi 2. So if I move my constants over, I can write this as the second derivative of psi 2 is equal to minus l squared psi 2. Um, notice a few things. Uh, there's a minus sign here. And also, I've defined this new variable L, which is 2me or 2me plus v naught over h bar squared, square rooted, uh, and that is still going to be a positive number inside the square root there. Solutions to this wave function look like c cosine of lx plus d sine of lx look like cosines and sines, and I can't immediately rule either of them out. So my three wave functions in the three regions are given here. Let's just collect those results in one place. So we had psi 1. We have psi 2. And we have psi 3. So these are wave functions in each of the three regions. In order to make much more progress, let's consider what our solutions look like. Namely, since I have a potential which is even, my solutions will either be of the form that they're even, and so they'll either look like, well, so here's my potential. Uh, even solutions will be like the one I drew up above, even across the vertical axis. 
So in particular, psi of minus x is equal to psi of x. Or solutions will look odd. And I don't mean strange, of course, I mean odd in that um, they flip when you reflect them across the vertical axis. So again, here's my potential well. What would an odd solution look like? Well, it would look something like this. Again, we've seen similar things in, say, the infinite square well or the harmonic oscillator. Odd solutions are one where psi of x is equal to minus psi of minus x. When you flip the sign on x, you get a minus sign on the wave function. So those are my even and odd solutions. So I want to pick even solutions. I want to stick with just even solutions here. Uh, we'll look at odd solutions in a different place. OK, so what do even solutions tell me? Well, notice that even solutions just exchange regions 1 with, region, with regions 3. So regions 1 and regions 3 are the same. Uh, and so that tells us, if I look up at my psi 1 and psi 3, that my coefficients a and g should be equal in order for even solutions. In region 2, if I want even solutions, uh, then the wave function in even 2 must, of course, therefore be even. Uh, notice that only the cosine is even. The sine function is odd, so I should have to set d equal to 0 if I want to work with even solutions. I'm just not allowed to work with the sine of lx for even solutions. You can anticipate I'm going to want that for odd solutions, though. OK. So my even bound states are going to be wave functions that look like psi 1, here, psi 2 is just going to be a coefficient times a cosine of Lx, and then psi 3 is essentially the same thing as psi 1, except e to the minus kx. Note here that my k is related to the square root of e, and my l is related to the square root of e plus v naught. So there's two places that e is hiding. It's hiding inside of both k and l here, which are different. Let's now look at imposing our boundary conditions. So remember, our boundary conditions should be that the wave function is continuous and its derivative is continuous at the boundaries between 1, 2, and 3. So the boundary conditions are going to happen at x equal to a and x equal to minus a. So let's start at x equal to a and impose that the wave function is continuous. OK, but the wave function should also be continuous at minus a. So this should also be true. So let's write this out. So I should have c cosine of la is equal to a e to the minus ka, and then imposing minus a, I should have a e to the minus ka is c cosine of minus la. Uh, notice that these are actually the same, because the cosine of minus la is the same as cosine la. And so I'm just going to stick with one of them. I'm going to label that equation 1 for right now. That was the continuity of the wave function, but the derivative of the wave function should also be continuous at x equal to a and at x equal to minus a. Again, the derivative should be continuous. We don't have any delta functions around or something. So writing that out, get minus c l sine of l a, and that's equal to minus a k e to the minus k a. And then uh, you can pretty much expect I'm going to get the same thing for the other boundary condition, so I'm just going to stick with this one and call it number 2. So I have these two equations, 1 and 2. And so now what I want to do is I'm going to take 2 divided by 1, literally equation 2, and divided by equation 1. And then I get the expression L tangent of LA is equal to K. That's simple enough. So this should tell me the allowed energies. In particular, K here is a function of energy. Recall that K is minus 2ME over h bar squared square rooted. Um, and L is also a function of energy. 
because it is 2m e plus v naught over h bar squared square rooted. And so ultimately the question we need to answer now is what are the allowed energies that will satisfy this equation? And in particular, this is a transcendental equation. Uh, it's not a normal equation. We can't solve this algebraically. Uh, and so what are the allowed energies that satisfy this transcendental equation for some given depth of the well v naught? And we're going to stop there, and in the next video, we'll figure out how to solve that problem.